Okay, I want to talk a little bit more, maybe giving some more definitions that the Indiana title insurance law covers over, is an escrow account. What's an escrow account? An escrow account is any checking account established by a closing agent or company with a bank, a savings loan, credit union, savings bank that is chartered under the laws of the United States. Basically an FDIC, FDIC insured, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, okay? So you can't say that my escrow account is my back pocket. <laughs> uh, I, it'd be nice to try that, but you can't. It's got to be insured by an FDIC. Um, and it's held exclusively for the deposit and disbursement of funds for an escrow transaction. Question? Well, sure. Let's talk about escrow transaction. You guys are excited, aren't you, today? <laughs> You're leading me into my next, what's an escrow transaction? An escrow transaction is a transaction which a person deposits funds that are held until a specified event occurs. Anybody have any idea what a specified event would occur? Yeah, closing. So you got to hold the money till closing or a prescribed condition has been formed in connection with the purchase sale or financing of an interest in real estate. So it's a closing. Now, there is another place well, I don't want to talk about it now, but we're going to talk about disbursements where you can disperse when it's not closing. <laughs> Dave up here is giving me a headlight, dog in the headlight, deer in the headlight look. Yeah, you can actually not have a closing. Sure. Happens all the time, man. Something happens, buyers can't buy, all of a sudden the lenders change their mind, things happen, and uh, the title company may be holding earnest money or something of that matter, and they have to disperse it in a different fashion. Uh, the term escrow uh, transaction does not include uh, a loan financing if the only parties to the loan are the lender and the borrower, like a refinance, or the lender is responsible for dispersing all the funds to the borrower or a third party in order to pay fees charged associated with the loan transaction. Okay, so on a refinance, that's a different thing. There's no seller and buyer. The buyer is the seller. All right, so if the only parties to the loan are the lender and the borrower, that's a refinance. That's not really an escrow transaction. Uh, or if the lender is dispersing all of the funds to the borrower in order to pay fees and charges associated with the loan. Okay, so that is not a, a loan transaction. That solve your question or an escrow transaction? Yeah. So basically, what they are saying here, what they're not wanting is somebody go, well, I put money in escrow. Well, yeah, but you took it out the next day. Yeah, but I put it in escrow. Yeah, you're still in violation because what you took it out for was not a proper reason. So they got to have an escrow account. They put money in the escrow account, and it can only be dispersed upon a closing. All right. <clears throat> Good. Now, there's this thing called the Indiana Good Funds Law of 2009. The Indiana Good Funds Law states that any amount that is to be brought to a closing in the excess of $10,000 has to be wired to the title company. Now, that plays a role for the lender because most of the time, if not always, the lender is wiring more than $10,000. It also, just as a side note for anybody that's licensed in real estate, uh, it also applies to the buyer. If the buyer is bringing down payment that's more than 10000 he can't bring a certified check anymore. He has to wire the money into the title company. Uh has to do with U.S. currency. And they are held, unconditionally held by an irrevocable credit to the escrow amount account. Okay? So that's the good funds law. Uh, certified cashier's check are drawn on an existing account at the bank. Uh, are chartered under the laws of the United States as long as it's less than 10 grand and a check drawn on a trust account from a licensed real estate broker. That's what we just talked about. And personal checks cannot exceed $500. Uh, I have seen allow them, have seen a, a buyer actually have to, was allowed to write a personal check because he only brought like $57 to the closing. All right. A check issued by the state, the United States, or any political subdivision of the state 
uh, a check drawn on an escrow account of another closing agent or a check issued by a farm credit service authorized under the Farm Credit Act of 1971. Any questions about that one? Good, because I don't never seen that happen. Okay. So I guess if it's a farmer, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what a check issued by a farm credit service authorized under the Farm Credit Act. I don't know. So that is the good funds law that deals with the money coming to the title company. Now, if it's a real estate transaction, like a buy sell, it refers to any escrow transaction with a settlement or closing in the connection of the purchase, sale, or finance of interest in real estate. So a real estate transaction includes an escrow transaction plus the settlement as long as it's in connection with the purchase or sale of a uh, interest in real estate. Notice it does not say refinance because remember refinances are exempt. The term also for real estate uh, term does not apply, real estate transaction does not apply where the only party to the loan is the lender and the borrower. Once again, that's a refinance, so that's not a real estate transaction. And the lender is responsible for dispersing all the funds directly to the borrower. Okay? So, makes sense. Real estate agents are not involved in a refinance. So it's not doesn't wouldn't be considered a real estate transaction remember it doesn't deal with the closing or the settlement of an interest in real estate it's the same guy or married couple buying and selling to themselves where there's no agent involved all right